Welcome back to Art with Mrs. Bowie. Today we're going to learn about a group of people called the Zapotec. They are a group of American Indians who live in southern Mexico. We'll take a look at a quick slideshow to look at their artwork. The Zapotec are a group of American Indians who live in the state of Oaxaca in southern Mexico. The Zapotec have lived in this area for thousands of years. Here you can see that these rugs are made by, um, by humans, not by machines. So when actual people make these rugs, it takes much longer and it's that much more special because you're not able to make as many of them as quickly. We will use different types of lines to create Zapotec line rugs. Although these rugs are hand woven, we will explore lines using supplies such as markers, crayons, or watercolor paints. Here you'll see the different lines that they've used. I see a lot of diamonds. I see bright colors. Here are some other examples. And again, we'll practice the zigzag line again. We'll also practice, this reminds me of our castle line, and we'll even make the fringe at the end of the rug. This is just an example. You may use any line or color or line combination to create your rug. Straight, wavy, zigzag, dashed or broken lines dotted lines, loopy lines, spiral, bumpy, and so on. A line is a path created by a point moving through space, or what I say, a line is a dot that takes a walk. Make your rug on your own using your creative imagination. So here, I will show you how to make your rug. Today you will need white paper, construction paper of any color of your choice, crayons, watercolors, paint brushes, glue, and scissors. We do need a lot today, but I promise it'll be a lot of fun and you'll enjoy what we do. So, oops, okay. So with my white paper, I'm going to use my crayons and I will start to create the designs on my rug. So here we're going to use line and shape. My first line that I'm going to do, and you don't have to do the same ones that I'm doing, but my first line that I'm going to do is I'm going to do the, what I call the zigzag or the mountain lines. And here, I think I'm going to do them a little bit thicker because on a rug, it's not just, it's not necessarily a very thin line. We're using, uh, sometimes they'll have very dark or thicker lines or darker patterns so that people can see them because people make these patterns in the rug so that, because that's what makes it special. And if we make your, if you make your lines too thin, we won't be able to see them or it won't look as, as realistic as a rug. So I have my zigzag line, and then I'm going to choose another color. And here what I want to do is you can have a line of shapes, and they like to use a lot of diamonds. So I'm putting on, I'm putting a diamond here. And your diamonds don't have to be one color. You can have alternating diamonds or a pattern. So if you talked about patterns in class, you can have an AB pattern. So I think I'm going to do blue, brown, blue, brown. And again, when I'm coloring, I'm fighting the white. Fighting the white and staying inside my lines. This is an AB pattern. So I have my brown and blue. And what do you think will be next? Blue. Brown. And my
my diamonds aren't perfect, but I do not expect you to be perfect. I just expect you to try your best. And my last diamond. I'm also going to do the castle line. Um, if you didn't try this line last time, I'd like for you to try it this time. So I call this the castle line because it reminds me of the top of the castle where the wall is. So to do this line, what I do is I go across, up, across, down, across, up, across, down, across, up, across, down, and across again. And I'm going to go through and I'm going to make these lines thicker because that is what makes the rug more interesting. And now um, I'm going to do a line of pluses because I saw that on some of the rugs. And your line does it, your lines don't have to be like mine. They can be completely different. I might just add in a loop in there for fun. But I was trying to use the lines that were inspired by the Zapotec people. And if you see, sometimes I have to go back and go through my work as well. So here what I'm going to do to make my crosses is I'm just going to go all the way across and then I'll do that instead of having to make one cross at a time. But if you want to make one cross at a time, that's fine. It's completely up to you, whatever works best for you. I'm using a lot of red because I was inspired by the pictures that we saw earlier. I saw a lot of red in that. And if you don't want to use red in the pattern, you can use red in a different, in, in the paint. You don't have to necessarily use it in the pattern. Okay, and for my last line, we'll do green in here. Um, I think I'll do a wavy line. And remember, what did we say last time? A line is a dot that takes a walk. A line is a dot that takes a walk. And hopefully you guys remember that by now. I know all my older students, they remember that because we repeat it from ever since they were in kindergarten. So. Hopefully you guys remember that by now too, so that a line is a dot that takes a walk. So now, so now I've done that and now we're using the part of the construction paper. So for the construction paper, what I want to do is I'm going to cut off part of my construction paper, but I don't want it to be too thin because I want to have enough so that we can glue it onto the back of our white paper. I would do this part first before we paint because after you paint, it will be very, um, it will be more difficult to, to glue down this fringe part. So this part is the fringe. And if you can try to make them the same size, you don't have to, but it's, okay, so that should be roughly about the same size. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to turn my paper over and I'm going to put glue on the ends and I will glue the fringe and it's not fringe yet, but it will be. So I'm going to glue it on there on one side and then I'm going to glue it on the other side. 
So now I have my rug, but it doesn't necessarily have the fringe yet. So now I'm going to show you how we do the fringe. So basically you take your scissors and you just cut into it like that. And then it'll look really fun. It'll be the fringe of your rug. So we've worked on our lines, we've worked on shape, and now we are working on our cutting skills. So when you're cutting, make sure that you don't cut into the white part. That's not what we want. So here's some fringe, and I will do the fringe on the other side as well. I'm doing the fringe on the other side. And lastly, we will paint. So now I have my beautiful fringe and this is to me this is what makes it look like a rug but now we get to the fun part so I love using watercolors and so with the watercolors you can do oopsies you can do one color throughout the entire throughout the entire paper or you can do different colors for me I feel like I want to do different colors so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to start off with again Watercolors are activated by water, so if you put your brush in there and you're not getting any paint, add some more water to it. So here I'm going to use my brush and I'm going to add my orange to it. Try to stay in the lines of each section. It's okay if you get out a little bit. I don't expect you to be perfect. And obviously I'm going to make mistakes as well. So. So there's one, and then now, how about I try, I think I'm gonna try some green now. So now I'm going to do green for the section. Again, I probably need some more paint here. So I'm going to do some green. And I have a bigger brush. If you have a smaller brush, it might take you a little bit longer, but it's okay, painting is fun. And then I'm going to use a different color. Be careful that you don't use too much. Um, be careful that you're not using too much water. There is, if you use too much water, it will, it might make your paper very soggy and we don't want that. And it's also important that we use crayons and not markers when we're doing our lines because if you use markers, it will bleed or the colors will start to fade when we use our watercolors. So that's why we used crayons because the crayons kind of act kind of work as a wall and they won't um, they won't bleed or the colors won't go away once we do that. And then I'm going to use yellow for this middle section. And you can repeat colors. It's absolutely okay to repeat colors. They they repeated colors in the rug, so it would be okay for us to repeat colors as well. Okay, now I think I'm going to do a purple. I can't wait to see all of your work. I think this is going to be a fun one for everybody. And I just have one more section left. So for the last one I'll do blue. Whatever, so that you guys can see. So this is our rug and then you'll put it to the side and you can also take a picture of it and put it into Seesaw so that I can see. So again, these rugs utilize, these rugs utilize color, shape, and line. Um, and so I used I use different lines here. I use zigzag. I have shapes, which are diamonds, and you can have a line of shapes as well. I have my castle line. I have my crosses, or it might be a picket fence line, like a fence line. I have my waves, or it can be your hills. So you can use a number of different lines. Feel free to repeat lines. Feel free to re repeat different colors. 
work on your scissor, um, work on your scissor skills with the fringe. And I cannot wait to see all of your work. So I'm gonna put this down so that it can dry because it's kind of dripping everywhere. Um, be sure to put your work into Seesaw and I cannot wait to see everything that you create. I hope that you're having a lot of fun.